After almost 10 years, Mario Kart 8 is finally complete with a whopping 96 tracks. And today I'm going to be listing them all from worst to best. I'm going to start this off with a hot take. Waluigi's Pinball is not the lowest on this list. Can you imagine if I actually put that as my worst track? No one, no one hates that course. Anyway, Baby Park can be fun when you're winning. But whenever you're losing, this map is just awful. It's just a tiny track with two right turns where the gimmick of the map is that it's so short that people in the front are always lapping the people in the back. So anyone can hit anyone else with an item at any time. It's kind of messed up when you think about it. Getting hit by the guys in first, second, and third while you're down in eighth, it is simply not fun and probably can't be called good game design either. It's called Excite Bike, but honestly, there's nothing exciting about it. <laughs> Big Baby Park has the same general design as the previous map, but without the one gimmick. This map's just too long for you to really be able to lap anyone. So all this track has going for it is that there's these little ramps you could do tricks off of. So you know, just like uh, almost every other track in the game. I just I just don't like it. It's so boring. It's not even fun when I'm winning because I don't get to stomp an eight-year-old over the internet like I'm doing in Baby Park. But the track is way less luck-based than Baby Park, though. So it has that going for it, along with a 94 other maps, I guess. The booster course pack gave us 48 new courses for $24.99. That's like 52 cents a track. You can't complain about that, they said, foolishly underestimating just how much of a whiny little bitch I truly am. Yeah. You can find a lot of maps in the first half of this list there just from the booster pass. I think because a lot of them were made to fit into the mobile game, they had to be a lot smaller and simpler, and therefore are often inferior to the more complex maps of the original game. But you know what I'm really glad they added in the booster pass? A third Mario circuit. I'm really glad they added a third Mario circuit into the game, but this time with no grass, it's all brown, and it is like a one-to-one -one translation from the original SNES map. Ooh, watch out though, because this map's got a little bit of spice on it with its hazard, singular. I have never hit that oil slick and I don't even know why it's there. This map does actually have more than two turns on it though, and there's a little shortcut you can take if you have a mushroom, so I do have to give it that at least. Unlike a couple of other maps in this game, it most certainly has a design, but don't worry because we can only go up from Mario Circuit 3 with Mario Circuit DS. That's right, they added a fucking fourth one. And it's almost just as bad as the third. Who greenlit this? Why? Who's, who's waking up going, you know, there's just not enough Mario Circuits in the game. We need enough to make a Mario Circuit Grand Prix. I mean, at least this one's aesthetically much better than Mario Circuit 3. We got a grand total of five obstacles on the course with two Goombas, the Piranha Plants, and the Wiggler on lap three. Um... That's it. Remember, they ended up choosing this course over three different rainbow roads they could have added to the game instead. And yeah, maybe that's too many rainbow roads, too many courses with the same theme, but I'd rather have eight rainbow roads over four Mario circuits, frankly. Honestly, the fact that I didn't take the last four rainbow roads and give us a rainbow road cup, huge miss. Would have been hype. Oh well, at least there's always Mario Kart 9. Boo Lake is a course that most certainly exists. The sunken boardwalk theme is pretty cool, I guess. Some of these turns can be hard when you're making them in the thick of the pack with people coming down at you from every angle. But honestly, there's not much to say about this course. It just doesn't have a lot going on. It's just kind of a big circle that just exists. I mean, you could, you could say that about most circuits, they're all just kind of big circles, but uh, this one's a boring circle, you know? I would have much preferred Banshee Boardwalk from the N64 over this course, frankly. Always loved that one. And it's got a bunch of bats that knock you around a bit as you drove through them, which might not sound like much, because it's not. But it's more than what this crack's got going on which is nothing. But Donut Plains 3? Oh boy, here we are with the first map from the original Mario Kart 8. That's right. They made you pay extra for all the courses worse than this one. Donut Plains 3 is another SNES remake like Mario Circuit 3, but they actually updated it with some grass, water sections, and obstacles. Look at those moles go. This map does have the exact same final turn with the mushroom shortcut in it like Mario Circuit 3. I thought this was weird at first, but after critically reviewing every map in the game, uh, turns out like half the courses have this exact same shortcut. And you know what? I get it. It's a good shortcut. All in all though, Donut Plains is a nice reimagining of the original SNES map. More than I can say about our previous one. Not bad, but it's still pretty middling. A 5 out of 10 course that doesn't have too much going on. The biggest thing I can say about this course is the fact that I would only rank 5 courses below it, which really goes to show just how few bad maps there are in this game. But we still have a few more courses to go before we get to anything I would actually call good. Next up we have Riverside Park. This map has some walking piranha plants on it that when hit drop items. And I, uh, that uh, that's it. That's the gimmick. Technically, it has more going on for it than Donut Plans, I guess, so I have to give it that. But I think there's like 
two mushrooms you can get from hitting the piranha plants the entire map and they do not respawn, at least as far as I can tell. I like the aesthetic of the map, but honestly, it's too short and simple to really be anything great. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't like desert themed maps. It's all just yellow and brown. It's just a boring theme that's really not much fun to look at. So it's not going to be any surprise that I put the GBA desert map Sunset Wilds this far down the list. It's got some things going for it, like a, uh, the shy guys dancing around his obstacles and this water. It, it, it's pretty boring though. Also, the music is just out of place. It sounds like some cowboy thing, but these guys look like they're on a mining expedition. You know, cowboys didn't mine, right? They wrinkled cows. That's why they're called cowboys. The historical inaccuracies alone make this the worst desert map, honestly. Dry Dry Desert is coming in close, though. Just one place above Sunset Wilds, it's inarguably better with the pokies and the decaying ruins serving as much better obstacles. And there's also that quicksand pit. Whoa, you gotta drive left or right around it. Whoa, that's... That is certainly level design in a video game. Yeah, again, desert theme, sand pit. I, I just don't feel like they had a lot to work with here. Deserts are just boring, not much to say about them. Then we have Sky Garden GBA. Weird that there's two cloud levels in this game and they're both beanstalk coded. Even weirder that they felt the need to add a second beanstalk cloud level into the game that's worse than the original one they already had in there. Sky Garden GBA is just another case of a basic Game Boy Advance course that was too simple to really stand out much at all. There's one shortcut at the end that you need a mushroom to use, just like uh, almost every other level in the game. And besides from that, there's not really much to say about this one, but unlike the last course, at least I can say I enjoy the theme here, even if it's not original. Now Nintendo, I gotta ask you, why did you add Toad Circuit into the game? I feel like people always choose this one when it comes up online, so maybe I'm in the minority, but it's just so bland. I don't really like it much at all. Toad Circuit was the first track from the 3DS game, so you know, it's like that game's equivalent of Mario Kart Circuit. You know, the tutorial level, but without the hover section that speeds everything up, so it's just like a, a, a normal track. Oh, but they got a little spicy when designing this one, because instead of a figure eight like some of the more simple courses out there, they give this one an extra bend in the track. Eh? 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 You know, I remember playing Chaco Mountain before on the N64 as a child, and honestly, I never cared for it much back then. But a lot of people are hyping this track up when it got announced for the booster pass. Was I just wrong as a child? Was this track actually a banger the whole time? No. 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 This list is ordered. You already know what I think about it. I mean, it's okay. I like the bit where you're going up the mountain and the rocks are falling on you, but it's just a bit simple overall. Still not sure what all the hype is about, honestly. Also, uh, I know it's called Choco Mountain, but it just, just cause it's brown doesn't mean it's chocolate. You know what else is brown? Dirt. You know what most tracks are covered in? Dirt. It, it just looks like dirt. There are tracks in the game that they actually made look like chocolate, you know. It really should have retextured this one to make it look a bit more, uh, tasty. Brown itself is just not an aesthetically pleasing color to be staring at for the whole race. Oh boy, are you ready for another GBA booster pass course? Cause I sure am. Snowland GBA isn't terrible. I actually think it's pretty okay. A couple of quick cuts you can take here and there for a little bit of a shortcut if you have a boost. The penguin obstacles are cute. Nothing amazing though. The biggest disappointment about this level is just that the roads are covered in ice, but they aren't slippery. They should have just made the whole course slippery. That would have been a good gimmick to set apart from the other GBA courses, said the total psycho who's never made a video game himself before. Honestly, it's a pretty simple track as is, but I just like winter courses. I like the snow and the bright colors, and even if I think Chaco Mountain is the better course as far as track design goes, I have much more fun driving around on snowlands and uh, staring at the snow. It's just my vibe, and you better believe me when I say this is not going to be the most egregious example of me boosting a track up the rankings just because I like looking at it. Daisy Circuit, yet another one of the courses of all time, featuring Daisy dancing with Luigi and uh, this, this roundabout I got lost in the first time I drove on it. Look, I know I'm just stupid. This happens in real life sometimes too, but I've seen other people getting lost in the same roundabout too, not just me. This has to be a design flaw on the map or something, not just a problem with me getting confused by circles. And worst thing about this map? That's it. That's all this course has going for it is the circles. I mean, this drift at the end with the boosts is fun, but eh, meh, a lackluster course all around. I think it's kind of a waste of a track to stick in the final DLC wave, honestly. There were a lot of better options we missed, but hey, uh, uh, bone dry dunes. I'm gonna be honest. I forgot what course this was when I saw it listed in the script. And when I looked up my B-roll footage to remind myself, I kid you not, this is the first five seconds of that footage I captured. I can't remember this course. It's the one that falls apart with the lava. 
No, it's not. <laughs> Literally neither one of us could remember this course. So that's probably not a good sign. But is this a sign of a really forgettable course or just early onset dementia? But is this a sign of a really forgettable course or just early onset dementia? Uh, but is this a sign of a really forgettable course or just early onset? No, it's just another boring desert track. It does have a few fun turns and branching paths in it though. So it's definitely a step up from the last couple that we've looked at today. But why is this map so dark though? Like the race is taking place at sunset, so you just spend half of it in the shadows. And I'm going to be honest, looking at a bunch of dark yellow and brown rocks is not more interesting than looking at a bunch of brightly colored yellow and brown rocks. Like if you're going to keep doing the same theme over and over again, at least make it fun and colorful to look at, like a pinball machine or a bunch of toys or one of those baby sensory videos? Now that's something that can hold my attention. Hey, hold on. I think I have an idea for something. You need to call me a moto about this one. I'm not gonna lie. I'm shocked. Tokyo Blur is this high up on my list. That's right. This high. The booster pass gave us a lot of these real life city themed maps that are almost all exactly the same with Tokyo being the worst one. I mean, at least it's better to look at than uh, the desert because here you get to see Tokyo Tower and the Thunder Gate and um, the, the famous Tokyo Highway. Don't you love traveling somewhere to see the highway? I'm really questioning how they managed to make the biggest city in the world look so boring. Like Tokyo has the biggest subway in the world, right? If you're gonna make us look at transit, at least let us drive through that or something. Let me look at the Shinkansen or something. I don't know, just not the fucking freeway. Like every other real life city map though. Every lap on this course is different. So that's pretty cool at least. But like that being said, it's just like every other real life city map they put in the game. So that just means that there's just nothing really special about this one. All the other maps do the same things this one does, but better in every single way. Speaking of same thing, but better, Madrid Drive is a map based on the real life city of Madrid. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of things to say already on these things. It's got the same gimmick. Every lap on the course is a new thing. We have a wiggler taking an afternoon siesta, a bunch of museums, and uh, uh, other buildings. This one's, uh, this one's not really that good either. I'm, I'm struggling to really find things to even say about it. I mean, at least you're not just driving around on the highway now. Jesus, Nintendo, what were you guys thinking? Do you guys just hate Tokyo because you're based in Kyoto? Is there some New York, Boston type rivalry between Tokyo and Kyoto that I'm just not aware of? Jesus, you did that city dirty. The fact that we don't spend half the course here on the highway is really the only reason Madrid managed to pull ahead here, honestly. Mario Kart Stadium is truly one of the courses of all time. The basic bitch course of Mario Kart 8, the first course of the Mushroom Cup, and the first course that most people will drive on when playing the game. A real ruler that all other courses are measured against. It's just a big course with a couple of shortcuts available to use if you have a mushroom, including this one with the pipes right before the finish line that even a decade after playing the game, I, I still manage to mess up sometimes. Where this map does shine though is the back half where it heavily shows off gliding and the new hover mode, which is new to Mario Kart 8. This map really helps to show off how it works for new players, allowing you to get a boost from driving into other carts rather than slowing you down like it normally would otherwise. Overall, Mario Kart circuit is a course that's pretty simple, inoffensive, if not a bit bland. It's just here to teach you how the game works, but at least it does it well. And I hope you enjoyed looking at that OG Mario Kart 8 track, because we're back at it again with the city courses now, baby. London Loop is again, just like all the other real life city maps with three unique laps. But at least all the buildings here have a nice British theming to them, rather than the bland modern infrastructure of Tokyo. So it gets a step up for that. That being said, it's just... <sighs> Just meh. I'm not really a fan of these real life city maps overall, honestly. I think they went way too hard with the idea for the booster pass without really putting in the effort to differentiate the cities from each other enough. So when the course itself isn't super fun to drive on like Tokyo or London, there just really isn't anything left to make the maps memorable. You're gonna end up seeing a lot of these courses in the bottom half of this list here. You know, like Los Angeles Laps, another city course with the exact same gimmicks as all the others. But this one actually does a pretty good job of selling the LA aesthetic. So I do have to put it ahead for that alone. You start off on that boardwalk from GTA 5, drive through Dodger Stadium, all before going by some oil derricks. It was a bold choice to make you drive through a homeless encampment at the Whoa. end of the race, but it really goes a long way to make you feel like you're really in LA. And you know where I really don't want to be? 
LA. I, 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 I'd rather not drive on this one again, I'm not gonna lie. Cheap Cheap Beach is another classic. Not like the top tier kind of a classic like Waluigi's Pinball, but one that really sticks in your mind just for being kind of memorable. It's a coastal paradise that just seems like a pleasant place to relax. The course itself is pretty simple, although the hard right turn at the beginning of the track, along with the more narrow section that's fenced in at the end can be tricky spots if you're under pressure from other racers. So it can be a fair bit of fun here and there. Honestly, this one's being raised up in the rankings a bit, purely based on aesthetics, but overall, it's a good 6 out of 10 course. Really nothing to complain about. Athens Dash is another real life city map, but honestly, it's kind of a standout from all the other ones. It's like they went, hey, what if we made a map in a city, but it was just kind of devoid of human life. So they just made this one full of Greek ruins. I also had no idea Athens just had these boulders falling off cliffs all the time. So that was pretty cool to learn. So educational, wow. What's most interesting about this map though is these aren't actually ancient ruins we're driving through here. This is just what the modern city of Athens looks like after 15 years of austerity measures. Trust me, that's a really funny joke if you know about the Greek debt crisis. Let's just move on. Okay, now it's time for a candy course that actually looks like candy instead of just a pile of dirt. Sweet Sweet Canyon is another Mario Kart 8 original with a super cool jump, some splitting paths, and a final shortcut that you can take if you have a mushroom. All hallmarks of an interesting track. It uh, definitely does all of these things worse than other tracks that have them, honestly, but it is still nice to have them all. Although I do have to say, the split track in the middle of the course here feels exactly the same in each direction, so it kind of just serves to thin out players onto two different tracks tracks while making things less hectic and more boring while you're driving through this section. It's almost like an anti-obstacle if you think about it, like highway barriers or something. I'm not really here for safe and orderly driving, Nintendo. I'm here to chuck turtles at babies. This course definitely could have used a bit more spice with the sweets. Rainbow Road 64 has been sullied. Ruined. It's a disaster. Remember that iconic opening where you used to fall onto the track? It's now been replaced with this booster segment where you're stuck to the track the whole time. And now it's just a one lap race too instead of the three lap gauntlet that it used to be. It's not even a particularly good lap either. The final stretch is now just a slow glide where it's pretty much impossible to overtake anyone too. Overall, the map is still fine on its own, and the aesthetic is amazing. You do have to give it that. An absolutely beautiful course to look at, but just not fun to drive on, and it's a huge letdown from what this map originally was on the N64. Massive disappointments, honestly. By far the worst Rainbow Road. Next up is Sky High Sunday. This is the first course I would really say that I unironically enjoy, which with 72 more courses to go after this is a pretty good indication of how good the courses are in this game overall. But this one's not like amazing or anything. Being just an oval with two big left turns, but pretty much every bit of this course does have something going on for it. Whether it's that glide at the start, the boosted path on the first turn, the constant jumps on that second straightaway, or the final turn which is shockingly easy to fall off of if you lose control. I really enjoy every part of this course. On top of that, it has a fun and colorful theme to it all that just culminates in making it a short but sweet course. Get it, sweet course? Like ice cream? I am very funny. I do have one gripe about this course though, and it's this railing boost here. All of these posts are boosts, but like, how am I supposed to know that just by looking at them? Every other boost in this game has like a blue glow to it or a bumper or something, but these are just rails that give you a boost for no reason. They should have added the little spinning bumpers here to make that more clear or something, but uh, whatever. The course is still fun without them. Ah, here we go. Cheese land. Another desert course. But uh, Lucky, you say. That's what you sound like. It's not a desert. It's made of cheese. Then why is there sand everywhere? What is it? Parmesan? Oh wait, maybe it's Parmesan. Anyway, the course itself is super bland and probably deserves to be further down on the ranking. But it does have one of my favorite exploits in the game. Check it. This is called bagging. You just let all the other racers pass and you can pick up the good items after they're gone. If you get a bullet bill, you, you win. That's it. You just win. You see, the bullet bill for some reason is programmed not to return you to cart form if you're on a sharp turn. But cheese land is just full of sharp turns. So there's only a few stretches where the bullet bill will place you back down. If you use the bullet bill as you're about to turn into this shortcut here, it will bring you all the way to this chain chomp. And if you're not in first by then, you can just use your mushroom or whatever other item you picked up. I mean, if you don't get a bullet bill after two or three item spins, you, you still lose the race, obviously. But a good gimmick is a good gimmick. And pulling this off online is hilarious. They call this track cheese land for a reason after all. <laughs> Mario Circuit GBA. Here we are, baby. Our third Mario Circuit on the list. This remake is from the original Mario Kart 8 and goes a lot further to change things up on this course than some of the other Mario Circuits we've seen so far. And by some of the other Mario Circuits, I do mean both of them, but I, I digress. This section of the track has been turned entirely into an anti-gravity portion. It's, uh... 
nothing exciting. A pretty average course as far as Mario Kart 8 courses go, but it's solid. Nothing really to complain about here. Definitely a fun course to play every now and again, but eh, that's it. It's just a fun course to play every now and again. Nothing amazing, you know? And as far as track designs themselves go, Delfino Airport isn't any more complicated or interesting than Mario Circuit, but it does take place in, wait for it, an airport, so I am going to have to give it a leg up over Mario Circuit just for the setting. I will say, my biggest gripe is that this section that's just a hovering platform is a bit boring, and the constant boosts do make it hard for anyone to really pass each other too often here. But both driving through the airplane and this final little shortcut you take through the baggage claim here are a lot of fun, so I do have to give it props for that. Definitely a memorable course, if not a bit bland. Royal Raceway is another solid course. Pretty similar vibe to a lot of the Mario Circuits, honestly, taking place in just a normal race track in a grassy area, but it's got a nice spring theme with the trees flowering, and the course itself is a step up from a lot of the earlier tracks, with a big ramp leading to a giant gliding section that's a lot of fun, as well as a very windy finish that gives racers a real good final opportunity to pass each other if they have a boost. Nothing too special to note here, it's a very run-of-the-mill course, but a very solid run-of-the-mill course. It's just a good time. What else can I say? In most games, water theme levels are typically pretty awful, but the second Mushroom Course Cup, Water Park, is uh, pretty okay. The track itself is pretty simple, with you spending most of your time spiraling down into the water while boosting off of these amusement park rides. But the best part of the course is unironically the one part where you aren't underwater, but instead the final stretch where you soar up out of the water and through a ferris wheel across the finish line. I've seen a lot of races end in an episode when someone either runs into the ferris wheel or this little stall on the ground, and that's hilarious. Every Every single time. I love it. I know it might sound weird, but this is one of my favorite final stretches of any track in the game, and honestly, this segment alone is really the only reason this course is up so high on the list. I just love watching people screw up on the final stretch, what can I say? You know what I don't love though? New York Mini is most certainly a course set in New York City. I guess? The course itself is the same concept as all the other city courses. Each lap you take a different route, blah 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 blah, but honestly, I don't see much New York in this New York map. There's a, a park, I guess? Is that supposed to be Central Park? And why are the roads curved? New York City is a grid, dude. This isn't what it's supposed to look like. Honestly, it feels like I'm driving around downtown Boston half the time here. If they wanted to make this New York, they should have had a part where we did a trick off the Statue of Liberty, or had an underwater section when we drive through the reflection pools at Ground Zero. Now that would have made this course more memorable. You know what city course actually goes, uh, at least a little bit to sell in the city it's in? Vancouver. It's Vancouver Velocity, baby. It's in Canada so we get snow and hockey, and uh, that's it really. They really just winter themed this city map and called it a day. Sure, it's more interesting to look at than New York or Tokyo, but honestly, the track itself is just so lame. I can't, I just really can't rank this one too highly on the list. It's just too generic, too samey compared to the others. But hey, they did Vancouver more justice than Tokyo, so it's something. There you go, Canada. Nintendo respects you more than Japan. Oh boy, Berlin Bioway is the third city map with the exact same gimmicks as the others in a row, but this time it's in Germany. And we get to look at all the iconic Berlin landmarks. We got the Brandenburg Gate and that's it. That's really the only landmark I recognize. Berlin just doesn't have a lot of landmarks for some reason. Oh, except for the Berlin Wall, I guess. That's here too. It's wild that the East German Soviet puppet state is canon to the Mario universe. And uh, even wilder that the Thwomps are trying to fill the wall back in to keep the East Germans where they belong. I mean, uh, protecting them from the capitalist pig dog American puppet state of West Germany. I always pegged Bowser's troops as being more monarchist than Stalinist, but maybe Bowser just really has an acute hatred of private ownership that we haven't been aware of up until now. Oh wait, no. Bowser's revolution from Mario Party. It all makes sense. <laughs> wow, there's so much lore on this track. You know it's even better than three city maps in a row? That's right, four. There's four in a row here. I'm putting Roma Venti next. I'm sorry, it's just these are all the same and these four are just the ones that aren't that bad. Look, look, instead of complaining, I'll start off with the positives. It's got that building from Jojo Part 5. Nice reference. It's also got not one, but two roundabouts. I'm not good at driving on those, so it's always nice to have a map with a bit of a challenge. And um, that's it, That that's the good parts of the map. The rest of the map is wholly unremarkable. I mean, Roma 
Rome is still better than New York and Tokyo, just because it's more fun to look at, in Mario Kart that is. I would much rather see New York and Tokyo over Rome in real life. Rome hasn't really built any new tourist attractions in the last 2,000 years. Kind of a boring city to visit, in my personal opinion. At least in comparison to New York and Tokyo. God, I am so upset how they managed to screw up two of the biggest cities in the world so badly. Here we are, baby. The best edition of Mario Circuit in the game. And we're still in the bottom third of tracks. I don't know if that says more about how boring the other editions of Mario Circuits were, or if the other tracks in the game are just that good. But either way, this track's solid. I like it. It's pretty simple. Just being in a giant inverted Mobius strip with no shortcuts other than a few chances to cut corners if you have a mushroom. But you do spend the entire time in hover mode. So even when you're stuck in the middle of the pack with the other races, you're pretty much always getting little boosts bumping off of each other, which makes this a really fun course when things are competitive. But again, pretty simple. Nothing too special in the end. Piranha Plant Cove. This one's a pretty interesting map. It has laps. But on each lap, you take a different path around the track, leading to each lap being completely different from the la Oh wait, this is just a city map. But like every good video game level, it's underwater now. It's uh, it's okay. I feel like this one might have been made primarily for tour because there's just a lot of really gentle turns with the very easy to avoid obstacles. Like this map is aggressively lacking in technical skill requirement. Hell, there's not even a lot of places to really do tricks here either. The map's just kind of the Mario Kart equivalent of a gentle stroll through the park, except the park is underwater, which, which is kind of a shitty park if you think about it. You know, as a big fan of winter levels, I have to say, Rosie Lillian's Ice World is a flop. Like the theme, Starry Night, Pine trees, some lights on a cozy village. Everything's checking out so far. But the course itself, uh, we got some interesting ideas here. A big drift around an icy cliff. Strong start, strong start. Then we have an underwater section under the ice. A bit like a worse version of Sherbert Land, but all right, not terrible. Uh, then the map kind of gets terrible. The last half of this map is just a cave with a couple of boost pads to the right, and then this final shortcut, which turns out you're not supposed to drive on without a mushroom. How the hell am I supposed to tell that, Nintendo? I guess that's the problem with snow maps. If it was grass, I would know it would slow me down, but you can't get away with that here. I mean, I guess the sides of this course are covered in snow and I can't drive on that. Oh no, I'm just stupid, aren't I? Ah well, this is a children's game. You need to make this game for idiots too, Nintendo. It's not offensively bad. Could just use some work to make the map better for dum-dums like me. On the N64, Yoshi's Valley was such a wildly complex track that the game didn't even know who was in first most of the time. This track's gimmick is that there's just a million different paths that you can take through the middle of the course before everything reconverges back at the end. And honestly, when I was a stupid, stupid child, I did get genuinely lost here a few times. But as a stupid adult, however, I love the chaotic feeling of never really being sure how close everyone is to each other when going through the middle section of the course. Even if the placement counter can actually keep track of things this time around. Pretty happy to see the course make it back into the game, even though I'm pretty sure there is an optimal path to choose, which kind of ruins the track's gimmick. But ah well, still fun. When the booster pass first dropped, Paris Promenade was the first city course they released, and honestly, it wasn't a bad first showing. Like all the other city courses, each lap is remixed, but for this particular course, you spend the first part of the final lap going backwards through the course head on into the other racers. It's actually pretty cool. You even get to drive through the Eiffel Tower each lap, which at least makes the city more identifiable when compared to some of the other city maps. Honestly, it's kind of a letdown how much better this course is compared to some of the other city tracks in the game, but it's still not great. A real mediocre course all around, and nothing too special if you don't care about Paris, which uh, frankly, I don't. Twisted Mansion is a very October map. Very spooky. Reeks of pumpkin spice. Why didn't I write this down? I always really enjoyed this one, but when I actually sat down to look at it critically, it was a lot shorter than I remembered. There's a few split tracks, but they seem to just be mirrors of each other, which actually just makes the course easier as so you no longer get any in the way of half the other racers. Fun theme though. I love the waving floors that you can trick off of, and the mushroom shortcuts right at the beginning of the track. A good course for sure, but it's just too simple to be anything really amazing. To Nintendo, while Luigi has always been a ripoff of a ripoff, a parody of a parody. And while I think he has more untapped potential than that, Waluigi Stadium really isn't helping to buck that reputation. It just feels kind of like a less exciting version of Wario Stadium. It's not a bad course. It's got some jumps, got a few good turns, but honestly, yeah, it's a bit meh compared to a lot of the other courses or even just the other dirt track stadium courses. Not much to write home about here. Honestly, if they were dead set on bringing back some of these stadium courses, they should have at least brought back Wario Coliseum from the GameCube. Now that's a banger. You know what there just hasn't been enough of in this ranking list so far though? Real life city maps. There's just 
not enough of them in the game. I wish we had more. They just never get old. No, but in all seriousness, Amsterdam Drift is okay. It's got the same gimmick as all the other city maps, but like Paris, you get to drive head on into the other racers during the final lap, which is always a fun twist, even if it isn't a unique idea at this point. The Netherlands, though, just makes for a better course aesthetically than Paris. With the tulip fields, the windmills, the canal, the red light district, it's just a lot more visually interesting than Paris. So I'm gonna have to say this is just the better course overall based on that alone. That being said, if you're not into the aesthetic, eh, it's, it's pretty much indistinguishable. You know, after the first few city maps, I was just kind of done with them. They're overdone, and frankly, don't do a good job of showing off the cities they're based in most of the time. But Bangkok, though? We got the gondolas, the street stalls, this gate, uh, top of the street stalls. They, uh, they tried with this one, but, uh, again, city map. It's, it's the same gimmick as all the other ones. This one is slightly more interesting than most of the other city maps, just because we're not driving around on the street, but it's, it's still a city map. Very, uh, a very boring drive through the uh, not streets for the most part, honestly. You know what makes a good break from all the boring ass city maps though? Bowser's Castle 3. Now this is how you do a remake. Now that Mario Circuit 3 one to one translation stuff. Take notes from this one guy who uh, made both of these tracks. Huh, I guess you already took the notes. Anyway, this one's pretty good. I mean, the map is technically a one-to-one -one recreation, using the exact same layout as the original course. But now we got these ramps up and down the map, these dividing walls that you can actually drive on top of. They even added in a hover section, just like the remake of Mario Circuit GBA. I mean, this is uh, still the worst Bowser Castle in the game, don't get me wrong. But it at least feels like they really modernized this track in the best possible way they could. I wasn't expecting to like a SNES course remake, and yet here I am pleasantly surprised. Guess it goes to show that a bad Bowser's Castle is still a good map. You know what else is a good map? Dolphin Shoals. Dolphin Shoals is another underwater course, but unlike Blue Lake and Water Park, Dolphin Shores actually takes advantage of the underwater theme to create some more interesting environments that actually affect the race. Principally, this underwater cave section towards the middle portion of the track, with pipes providing upward water drafts for you to ride as you approach this giant eel from Super Mario 64, whose back you can do tricks off of to give yourself little boosts too. The only thing I would say dolphin shells is really missing is a decent ending. Sure, you can take a little shortcut over the rock portion if you have a mushroom, but it really doesn't measure up to the Ferris wheel section of Water Park. Overall, though, I do have to give Dolphin Shins the overall title of superior water track here, though. Wario Stadium DS is yet another one of the maps of all time. I need to come up with a better joke. I mean, it's definitely a little step up from Waluigi Stadium, though. It's got more opportunities to do tricks off these ramps, a fun little anti-gravity section where we get to drift along a wall. Um, Honestly, not a huge fan of these like monster truck stadium sort of maps, but I do feel like this one does a much better job of portraying the spectacle you'd expect here, unlike Waluigi Stadium. So overall, this is the better map. Not as good as Wario's Coliseum, but hey, you know, and Nintendo gets to make the calls here, not me. Maybe in Mario Kart 9. You know, maybe it just used to be harder on the original Wii version, but Wario's Goldmine actually feels much easier now than when I was a child. Like, when I was a kid, I always thought this was a super tough track, but as an adult, yeah, it, it's okay. Like, it's got some fun turns on it, and the boosting against these carts is fun, but when I sit down and look at it critically, it just it kind of feels bland. Maybe a part of that is that it's just a big brown mine during the evening when all the colors are muted, but I don't know, the track design itself seems kind of basic too honestly. There is one branching path you can take, and I'm pretty sure that this cave is almost always slower than just going the normal way, so for all intents and purposes, there's only one real path you want to be on here. I mean, I'd still say it's an above average course, but nothing super special unless you like tapped out mines with nothing fun to look at in them, I guess. I'm gonna be honest here, the first time I raced on Singapore Speedway, I did not read the track name and thought I was in Vegas for some reason. But I mean, you get it, right? The colorful lights, the fountains, gives off strong casino vibes. Honestly, they probably could have gotten away with ditching the real world city theme altogether if they just leaned more heavily into the casino stuff. It would have at least made it a bit more interesting because I do not like the city themes of these maps a lot, but I've been over that enough already. If you can't tell by now, since these city maps are pretty much all the same, I'm pretty much just ranking them based on how much I like to look at them, and this one is much more fun to look at than most of the other ones, so I'd probably call it one of the best ones in the booster pass, honestly. Best city maps, that is. Not tracks overall. Oh no, there's a there's a lot of tracks better than this one. You know, whenever 
whenever they introduce a gimmick into the game, there's always a dedicated segment to show it off. And when they added gliding into Mario Kart 7, I think Rock Rock Mountain was meant to be that gimmick showcase, with a big ramp ending in a jump that leads to a giant gliding section through a woodland valley. And then again with the second gliding section beginning as you reclimb the mountain and reapproach the starting line. You could even glide through most of the opening segments on your second and third laps as a result. I think using the glider to cut a bunch of curves in this course is a lot of fun, even if everything else about the course is a bit simple compared to a lot of other courses in the game. Also, rather than the usual jazz soundtrack, this course features a rock-inspired theme. You know, because it's called Rock Rock Mountain. I unironically think they made this course's theme a rock song just because it's called Rock Rock Mountain. Fun course overall, though. Probably has the best gliding sections in the game, but I'm not a big gliding fan, so it's nothing special for me. You know, normally when I can't remember a course from the title alone, it doesn't end up being a good one. But Wild Woods really ended up being a shockingly good track when I replayed it for this video. The jungle village aesthetic is adorable. Really reminds me of the Nopon village from Xenoblade Chronicles for some reason. Probably because it's also a jungle village. But where this course really shines is the back half with a pretty exciting water slide section where you gain a speed boost as long as you stay in the stream before leading to a little shallow pond with a few boost pads you can jump off of. There's a few tracks in the game that have water slide segments like this. Frankly, a water slide is just an easy way to get me to like a level. That being said, this is just one of those times where I think everything this map does is just done better elsewhere. So maybe that's why I forgot about this one. Sherbert Land. Now this is a good winner, man. We got the lights, we got the snow, we got the ice sculptures, and the ice hazards. The vibes are immaculate. The course itself, uh, it's above average. A few good split track options. This whole map has a liquid water under a layer of ice theme going on, allowing you to drop under the main track in a few locations and drive underwater for a brief sprint. It's not an amazing track in and of itself, but it is fun. And with how good the aesthetics are, I do have to call this one a pretty strong course overall, even if it can be a bit boring to drive on. Next up on the list is Hyrule Circuit. Wait a minute, that's not a Mario character. That's right, it's not. Zelda, F-Zero, and uh, Animal Crossing for some reason are the only other other series to be featured in Mario Kart 8. Oh, and Splatoon, but we didn't get a course for that, so that doesn't uh, doesn't count. Why do they add two F-Zero courses into the game but no Captain Falcon, and yet there's two Inklings with no Splatoon course? Huge miss, honestly. Anyway, Hyrule Castle is okay. The course itself is pretty fun, if not a bit simple. However, where this course really shines is the amount of effort they put into the Zelda theme. All the piranha plants have been reskinned into deco babas, coins have been replaced with rupees, and they even replaced the item roulette sound effect with the iconic Zelda chest open opening theme. A lot of effort was put in here to make this course really feel like it takes place in Hyrule rather than anywhere else in the Mario world, and I think it really pays off. And this is only the worst of the crossover tracks too, really just goes to show how much of a good job they did on these honestly. You know, I heard a lot of people getting pretty hyped for Daisy Cruiser when it was first announced for the booster pass, and don't get me wrong, it's a good track, but honestly, it's nothing amazing, and it's not looking as good as it used to either. I mean look, the entire bottom half of the ship is flooded, this bitch is sinking. I do like the segment with the sliding tables though. That part's still fun. Everything else in the course though? Uh, it's fun overall. I'm glad to have it back, but nothing too amazing. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for putting this above Daisy's Cruiser. Oh, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for having this course this high up on the ranking, honestly. But man, I just love Merry Mountain. It's just so jolly. It's got that Christmas vibe that I love. Like, remember when you were a kid waking up on Christmas morning to find the presents under the tree and you were still too young to be filled with that cynical realization that all happiness is fleeting and ultimately meaningless? That's what this reminds me of. The track itself is very simple. There's only one split path you can take on these rails, and I'm pretty sure it's slower than the main course, honestly. Pretty team course design overall, but aesthetically, definitely one of my favorite courses in the game, so I've got to give it props for that, because that alone is what's carrying the course here. Why does the track with the giant toilet on it have to be so good? Squeaky Clean Sprint was another surprise to me. It's like a Pikmin crossover track without any of the Pikmin branding, where you're just this little guy driving through this giant bathroom. It's pretty short, with again, only one branching path where you can get on top of this towel cup, a very simple level. But you do have multiple underwater sections that give you some good currents to ride along with, like the drain that moves you along through the sink past this guy's failing marriage and the bath salts in the tub that give you a pretty good upper. I feel like if all the levels in the booster pass were this creative, we'd have a lot less of them on the bottom half of this list. But alas, they aren't. You know, if you were to take away the gliding, the hover boost, the split tracks, the track obstacles, and all the other game mechanics from the game designer's toolkit, you might not be able to expect them to create a very interesting level. But somehow, they still did it here. Yoshi's Circuit is a course with no hovering, gliding, boosts, split paths, or really any obstacles of any sort to be wary of. The only gimmick here is that the track looks like Yoshi. And sure, there's, there's piranha plants here, so technically there are some obstacles. But they're so far off the road, you'd, you'd already need to be in a bad spot to get hit by them. Well, really 
makes this track good though is just how much non-stop drifting you have to do to navigate around the sharp turns that make up the outline of Yoshi. And although the chance of you falling off the course is pretty much lower than any other track in the game, it's the sheer number of sharp turns that make this track a real test of technical skill, where more often than not, the driver is actually best at controlling their car ends up winning. Uh, I'd say there's a couple of courses we'll get to later that actually pull this off better, but Yoshi's Circuit is still a very fun track for a player looking for something more skill-based than some of the other courses. While it may not be as technical of a course as Yoshi's Circuit overall, Toad Harbor is in my opinion, another Mario Kart 8 classic. From the boat jump at the beginning, to the stalls you can drive on top of, to the split path, to the right here that brings you up to a more difficult to stay on but more rewarding shortcut, to the long downhill stretch alongside the street cart stowing coins, every part of this track brings a new little challenge for you to choose to participate in, in order to gain an advantage over your opponents who may opt for the more safe routes. But with the big risk being that most of these optional shortcuts are very narrow, far too narrow for everyone to go for them. You run the risk of being jostled off the track or into an obstacle, losing yourself more time than if you just took a safe route. The non stop risk versus reward design of this course really elevates it to a whole different kind of test from Yoshi's Circuit. One where not only your driving skills are being tested, but your situational decision making as well. And honestly, I think at the end of the day, the added complexity really pays off. Peach Gardens, another hyped up returning track in the booster pass. Unlike Daisy's Cruise though, I actually get the hype for this one. And not only that, but I think it's even better than the original. The course is mostly the same, with a few tight turns here and there, making for a frantic race. But in this remake, they flip things around in the final lap forcing you to drive backwards through the course. And like the Paris track, you can even drive head on into other drivers on lap two if you're far enough ahead. Aesthetically, it, it's kind of bland. But that really doesn't take away from just how fun this track is to actually race on. Moo Moo Meadows isn't the flashiest course, or the most technically challenging. But you know what it does have? Cows, cuttable corners, and lots of places to pull tricks on. This is frankly, just a fun course to race on when things are competitive. Conversely, I would have to say this one's pretty boring if someone gets too far ahead, and without little is going on in this course, that does happen from time to time. But with Mario Kart's rubber banding mechanics, that doesn't happen too, too often, so it's not much of a deal breaker for this course. Overall, I can't say it's one of the best courses in the game, but it's definitely one of my personal favorites. You know, this is going to be a nitpick right off the bat, but they just called this course Animal Crossing. Not like Animal Crossing Circuit or Animal Crossing Speedway. No, just Animal Crossing. Imagine if they just called Mario Circuit Mario. That's how stupid that name is. Good thing the track's pretty good though. It's pretty simple overall. A cheeky little cut you can make on the final stretch if you have a mushroom, which is always fun, although it's not particularly unique. But this track does have a pretty unique gimmick that no other course has. Every time you choose this course, it randomly selects a season to theme the track around, with each season having a few small changes, with the spring and summer courses having different ramps placed down on different sections of the map, the fall course having piles of leaves on the track, hiding items such as mushrooms, and the winter course being more slippery than the other three, and also having snowmen to act as obstacles, and as a crossover course like Hyrule Castle. All of the coins are replaced with bells too, which are uh, also coins, so you gotta look close to see the difference. But it's a cute detail. Overall, I'd say this one is more or less interchangeable with Moo Moo Meadows as far as the ranking goes, but I'm giving Animal Crossing the edge here, just for the season gimmick. It's a nice touch that really reflects the series that the course is based on. You know how I nitpicked the title of the last course? Well, Yoshi's Island isn't exactly any different. Fortunately, the course itself is actually pretty cool, because its track is based on the classic game, you guessed it, Resident Evil 4. No, it's Yoshi's Island. Can you imagine though? I would pay so much to have Leon on a jet ski added as a character. Hang on, sweetheart. It would be so funny. Just like Animal Crossing and Hyrule Castle, this course is full of little references. The shy guys on stilts, the little bird guys, they even have a question mark cloud that when hit, unlocks a little platform you can drive along back to the starting line. The track is pretty short and maybe a little bit too simple. Honestly, they knocked it out of the park with the theming on this one. If you've played Yoshi's Island before, I think you'll really appreciate this course. Oh yeah, here we go, baby. Koopa Cape is back. This was always one of my favorite courses on the Wii. The opening section is a bit bland, but then you hit that river with a water slide that leads into a second underground water slide with the electrical hazards. <laughs> Wait. No, wait, where did they go? Oh no, oh no, they took out the best part of the map. This course used to have a big rotating electrical hazard over a water slide, and it was amazing. Why would you do this to me, Nintendo? Honestly, despite the straight up downgrade, 
This map's still okay. The river section is still one of my favorite stretches of any track, but just having the back third of this course be a hazardless underwater section, it's just such a massive letdown from what this course could have and should have been. Huge blunder on Nintendo's part, honestly. Now, I don't feel like it should be a hot take to say it, but Mario Kart Double Dash was really outdone by literally every single Mario Kart that's come out since. Which is a good thing, of course. If Nintendo's going to keep making the same game over and over again, I do want to see it improve with every release. That being said, there's always been one course I've wanted to see come back. That's right. Dino Dino Jungle. Also DK Mountain. You know, that, the course we actually got. That one's okay, I guess. This course was also one of my favorites on the GameCube too, though. And I have a lot of fond memories of playing it online on the Wii version as well. So imagine my surprise when I play it for the first time in 15 years as part of the Booster Pass and it just left me feeling whelmed. Like, the cannon is fun. There's like 10 other maps that do that too. These tight turns that you take as you descend the mountain are fun. Probably the best part of the map, but honestly, they just don't compare to the stuff you see in Neo Bowser City. And outside of those two things, the map just really doesn't have a lot going for it. With so many tracks that have come out since this one, it's just been surpassed, done better in newer games. It was really kind of a letdown to go back. It's still a good course, but it definitely just doesn't compare to the stuff that's come after. You know, having 12 drivers on the track at once can be a little chaotic at times, but have you ever wondered, what if we could have like, a hundred drivers? Well, wonder no longer, because Toad Turnpike is here to allow you to fulfill all of your weaving in and out of traffic fantasies. Toad Turnpike is honestly a Mario Kart classic. The course itself is pretty simple, just being a big figure eight, but the constant flow of traffic provides an ever-changing field of obstacles for racers to navigate it around. But not every vehicle is just an obstacle, with some trucks offering ramps for you to jump off of and begin a glide, briefly giving you a chance to fly in a straight line over the traffic that would otherwise force you to weave and wind your way through the course. Toad Turnpike is something that, while simple on the surface, honestly can serve to become a pretty intense track when you're neck and neck with other racers and have less room to maneuver around the vehicles. You know, I thought Electrodrome was called Electrodome until I started writing this script, and that's probably just because I'm stupid, because it's 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 written right there on the screen every time you load into it. But you know what isn't stupid? This track. Just like Music Park from Mario Kart 7. Electrodrome is based on a musical theme, but rather than the classic analog instruments, this entire course is based around electronic music and features a techno nightclub vibe to it. Aesthetically, it's one of the best courses in the game, with the track itself in many sections reacting both visually and audibly to you driving over it. But the course itself, I do have to say, is a bit more simple than a lot of other courses on the map, with only one real shortcut, and it commits the O2 oh common sin of having split paths to choose from that end up being the same, serving only to make it less likely that you run into other racers, simplifying the race rather than providing any deeper complexity. But I'm a shallow boy, and this course has fantastic vibes, so you'll never hear me complaining when I get to drive on it. I'm okay with this one being carried on looks alone. You know what's wrong with Toad Turnpike though? Weaving in and out of traffic? just isn't dangerous enough. I also want to drive through oncoming traffic too, like that one time my dad drove us home from Christmas after drinking 12 glasses of his special eggnog. But it's more than just the traumatizing memories that set this track apart, because this track also gets some extra boosts along with exploding cars. Why are these just driving around? These are, these are just dangerous. Uh, I mean, that's really all the differences between this course and Toad Turnpike, but I do like to live dangerously. So I gotta say, this course is definitely a step up from what was already a classic course in Toad Turnpike. A great addition to the booster Pass. One of the best courses from Mario Kart 7, DK Jungle, made its return in Mario Kart 8, and it is just as good as the original, opening with a few bang and bounces to trick on, a run through, you guessed it, a jungle, followed by a sojourn in a temple where you get a few ramps to trick off of before a fun little split path you can take in the final turn, which can serve as both a final chance to pass someone at the end of the race or as a massive risk if someone manages to hit you off the course that will only make the jump here. All this while a jazzy remix of the classic Donkey Kong Country theme play. A great course overall with really nothing to complain about. Bowser's Castle is typically one of the best courses in any Mario Kart. Bowser's Castle for Mario Kart 8 is no exception as long as you count being in the top third of tracks as one of the best. Some classic fire and spike traps and a giant statue of Bowser trying to flatten you as you drive by. With a few hard 90 degree turns here and there it can be tricky when you're in a fight and that's just on the first lap. Starting on the second lap there's even more obstacles emerging as the statues at the beginning of the course start to shoot lasers at you. It's honestly not my favorite iteration of Bowser's Castle? That would probably have to be the Wii or DS versions. But hey, you still gotta recognize this course for what it is. A solid track that always makes for a good race, even if it is a little bit too simple compared to some of the courses that'll come later. Now you know by now that I love winter tracks. Anything with snow on it is typically going to get bumped up in the ranking just based on that alone. So what if I told you that there was a track 
it's only ranked this high in spite of its winter theme. Ice Ice Outpost is honestly kind of an ugly course, which is weird considering how much I typically love the snow aesthetic. I think it's just that the glacier drifting into the ocean setting is just a little bit too bland. Like, there's too much ice here. Like, I like seeing snow covering a landscape, but when it's only ice and snow, it's just a wasteland. It's bland and not really fun to look at. That being said, the track itself it slaps. The entire course is actually two tracks running parallel to each other, splitting and recombining as you make your way through it, forcing you to jump between one track to the other if you want to find the best route. On top of that, there's a bunch of little shortcuts littered throughout the map as well, few of which even require a boost to use. They're almost all skill-based shortcuts that are just really hard to stay on. Honestly, if it wasn't so bland looking, this course might have cracked into my top 10. But at the end of the day, Mario Kart 8 is not a game locking in courses that are both technically and aesthetically interesting. So when the competition is as stiff as it is, Ice Ice Outpost is just going to suffer in the rankings as a result. You know what character really needed a course in Mario Kart 8? This guy. Womp Ruins is a great course, with some fantastic sections that force you to choose between drifting around obstacles or taking the slower route along the walls to be safe. In this area in the middle with a bunch of split paths you have to choose between, and then there's a few little cuts you can take if you're skilled enough to stay on them. Oh my god, I just love it. As the name suggests, the place is filled with thwomps, making it one of the most hazardous maps in the game, demanding some careful driving from players if they want to place well in the end, which of course is always a welcome challenge. My only real complaint about this course is that I really feel like it's hard ever pass anyone during this final gliding section in the last stretch, which leads to kind of an anticlimactic finish. However, overall, Thwomp Ruins is still a really good course, and a very welcome addition to the track list. Now if only we could get Thwomp as a playable character. There is a shocking number of tracks that take place on highways in Mario Kart. Do you think the Mushroom Kingdom actually has a lot of highways? Or do they just build these for Mario Kart? Like do the toads live in little toad suburbs and have little toad cars they drive to their toad jobs of watching Princess Peach get kidnapped every day and not doing anything about it? Anyway, my favorite highway course has to be Shroom Ridge. It has the traffic gimmick, of course, with constantly moving obstacles you have to watch out for. On top of that, you're on a mountainside road filled with sharp turns that can be pretty difficult to maneuver while dodging both traffic and other players. This is probably the most challenging of all the highway courses as a result, which also means it's the easiest one to screw other people over on, which is very funny. Honestly, that's all I'm playing the game for. Thank you, Nintendo. Very good course. And while mountain high highways can be fun. What if there was no highway? Like, it was just a mountain. Shy Guy Falls is another Mario Kart 8 original, and honestly, I've always been a big fan of this one. The constant twists and turns make this another technical track, something I'll be saying a lot about these highly ranked courses. But on top of that, it's also got a fun gimmick. As the name implies, there's a waterfall you both get to traverse up and then back down while you're in hover mode, all while trying to stay on these booster pads to keep the water from slowing you down. It's a bit bland aesthetically outside of the falls, and it's not as challenging as some of the other maps, sure, but it's still fun, and at the end, that's all I'm really here for, so it's gonna be getting some high marks from me. You know what does have a good aesthetic though? The second beanstalk course of the game, baby. Cloud Top Cruise. I know it's not unique, and technically this course copied the GBA one, but it's just way better done here. The beanstalks actually offer a few little chances for shortcuts here and there that don't require any mushrooms, just your skill as a player. And this booster pad section in the middle of the track where the lightning is constantly coming down and striking the pads, forcing you to maneuver around it, fantastic. From beginning to end, this is just a super solid course course that never gets old. One of the best courses in the original Mario Kart 8. You know how there's so many highway maps in the game? Disgusting. Living in the Mushroom Kingdom must be like living in a middle-sized American city. Just endless suburban sprawl where you need to drive 20 minutes to get to the closest store. Fortunately, they're taking steps towards the 15-minute city dream with Super Bell Subway, and then taking two steps back by letting everyone crash their go-karts into it. Do you know how easy it is to derail a subway? They're not really supposed to be dealing with oncoming traffic. Oh well, at least drifting down the subway tunnel while dodging the train is fun. And that sharp turn at the end that can be cut with a mushroom? I've seen a lot of races get decided here. Very climactic. Very hype. Very good urban design. Very good course. You know what we haven't had in a while? A city course with the same gimmick as all the other ones, baby. But wait, this one's unironically good. Like, really good for no reason. Sydney Sprint is just as boring as Tokyo or New York when you're looking at it in terms of aesthetics, but it makes up for it by just being a really good track for some reason. Like, this one really shocked me. These big bike path turns are just great to drift down, and these ramps feel amazing to trick off the top of one to another, and just the music. Oh my god, the music. Why do they go so fucking hard for Sydney of all places? Easily the best city course. And honestly, one of the best courses in Mario Kart 8 as a whole, not just the booster pass, 
success. If it wasn't so generic, this course could have honestly have broken into my top 10, but uh, you know, city course. So there's, there's gotta be a compromise somewhere. You know by now that I just love water slides, but you know who else loves water? Uh, uh plants, I guess. They drink that shit all the time. Unlike animals who uh, also drink water all the time. Piranha Plant Slide is the next track on the list, alright? Unlike me, however, the water slides littering this map are constantly providing a smooth flow from one point to the next. A few maps have water slide segments, but this course is the only one to fully realize what you could do with them, putting a bunch of narrow slides that require deft handling of your car to stay in the stream. The prolonged slide you need to do while drifting while you're swept forward with it, and, uh, I mean, that's... That's it, that's all you can really do with the concepts. But this is my list and I like it. I will say that the underwater section at the end of the course is a bit bland, but not every second has to be amazing for the course to be a banger. Hey, you know what would be a good idea for a racing game? What if we made it so a train just cut everyone off now and again and forced them to stop and sit there for a minute? That would be very good game design. I genuinely don't understand what they were thinking with the original Calamari Desert. You really shouldn't make a course where people need to all stop and sit there for a prolonged period of time when the objective is to go fast. So when they announced that Calamari Desert was getting a remake for Mario Kart 8, I was a bit skeptical. But oh man, the glow up on this baby. The train can still technically stop you, but it's pretty rare and for a fraction of the time. The similarities pretty much end after the first lap though, as the course evolves, forcing you onto the train track, racing head on into the train through the train tunnel, getting squeezed against the wall by the train while getting chased down by other racers is a tense feeling, something that the original map never could give you. It's not the most amazing track of all time, but it's legitimately good now. A great remake of what was once a terrible course in my opinion. Absolutely love what they did with this one. Grumble Volcano is kind of like all those city maps if you think about it. Every single lap the course changes and you have to adapt. The only difference here being that instead of it being because we're driving through a different part of a well-maintained city, it's because this course is literally dissolving as we drive through it. I mean, it, it doesn't change that much honestly, but the track definitely gets more narrow in parts, and it gets harder to stay on the road. I've even had a couple of times where I've been hit by an item, only for the track to fall out underneath me while I was recovering, forcing me into the lava. Now that probably sounds like hell, and it is, but when it happens to other people, it's very funny, and therefore, good game design. Great course. You want to hear something that's going to make a lot of people really angry? I'm putting a tour track in my top 20, and you know what? On some days, when I'm feeling extra funky, it might even crack the top 10. Ninja Hideaway is a short map, but oh man, they went hard on the Ninja Dojo theme. We have the cherry blossoms blooming outside, in this traditional Japanese temple, shy guy ninjas pumping in and out of existence, hidden paths in the rafters, the bamboo garden, the traditional Japanese screens, the uh, uh Japanese music. I don't know the name for this genre, but it'll make sense when you hear the song, trust me. Every inch of this map just fits the theme perfectly. And as a result, it's genuinely one of the most fully realized maps in the game as far as aesthetics goes. Despite all the options for split paths, the track is still a little simple as far as driving challenge goes, so I really can't rank it much higher up on my list than this. But hey, you're not going to hear me complaining if we get more courses like this in Mario Kart 9. It's just really pleasant to drive on. Absolutely love it. Next up is Mount Wario. Mount Wario? But I wanted him to mount me. Why am I like this? You know what's even better than a ninja dojo? A nice ski getaway. Okay, it's not a better theme, but Mount Wario is more of a fun course to drive on. This is one of those courses without laps. It's just one long track starting off with a dismount from a helicopter onto the summit of Mount Wario, before descending into a massive cavern with a flowing river, across a dam and into a forest, filled with down trees that act as little bumps to trick off of, before we enter the final stretch, a well-maintained ski course with obstacles, a gliding section, and plenty of item boxes to give everyone one one final chance to win the race. While it's not a technically challenging course, it is a lot of fun with plenty of places to drift, trick, and chances to pass other players. I don't feel like I see people break too far out of the pack for too long on this course either, and things are always more fun when they're more competitive in my book. So all in all, a pretty great course from start to finish. But you know, despite the creativity of Mount Wario, throwing something new at us every 20 seconds, sometimes I'm perfectly okay doing the same thing over and over again, especially if that thing is just 50 mushrooms mushrooms you get to bounce off of. Mushroom Gorge is one of my favorite tracks from Mario Kart Wii, but I played that game when I was a stupid child. Is that track actually good? 
Or was I just stupid? And now that I've played this track again as an adult, I can safely say that the answer to both of those questions is yes. This course still slaps. I just love all the jumps and bumps, and I love the fact that you can trick off each one of these mushrooms for an extra little boost too. And on top of that, they even added this new blue mushroom that you can start to glide off of, which I think is a great addition. Honestly, it's a pretty simple map overall. Very straightforward concept, but it's a very good concept. An absolute banger from start to finish. One of the best courses in the game, no doubt. Mario Kart 8 has four crossover tracks, and wouldn't you know it, the two based on another racing game turned out to be the best ones. I know, it's shocking. Who could have seen that coming? No, but both of these F-Zero courses slap. And on these courses, we don't even collect coins. At least not directly. Instead, your coin meter is filled up as you drive over these little charging pads, just like in the original F-Zero games, which is a pretty cute touch. And on top of that, these tracks are absolutely covered in boosts, allowing you to speed through them at a much higher speed than you would most other courses. Although I must say, Mute City is the weaker of the two. Not that it's a weak course, mind you. Quite the opposite. It's a blast. It just has a little bit less going on, you know? There's still plenty of good curves to drift around, sections of the course that twist through the sky as you chain boost from one boost to another, all while that F-Zero theme plays. It's fantastic from start to finish, but eh. It's just those two things for the whole stretch of the course. Again, not bad things. This is one of the best courses in the game, after all. But with how much the other F-Zero course has going for it, Mute City was always just going to be left in the dust, no matter how good it was. Forced to live in the shadow of its more successful brother. You know, I value aesthetics and themes a lot in these courses. But sometimes, you just can't be a fun course to drive on, no matter how mediocre the aesthetics are. Coconut Mall is that track for me. Far away the most boring course to look at in the top 20. But don't let that fool you. This this track is a banger. This course isn't something that's technically challenging to navigate like Neo Bowser's City. Every few hundred feet, we do have a new obstacle to maneuver around. A couple of escalators that keep changing directions over the course of the race. Some fountains that can send you into a wall if you trick off them wrong. These cars. And then this final gliding section as you exit the mall. I love it. It's great. And on top of that, this course also throws a bunch of items at you. So this typically ends up being a pretty competitive track overall, with the group sticking fairly close together, at least in my experience. Overall, the course is a pretty Pretty simple, but it's just so competitive and so much fun to drive through, I can't help but rank this one highly. And of course, it doesn't hurt that the Coconut Mall theme slaps. One of the best songs in the Mario Kart series, easily. Maple Treeway. Sullied. Ruined. It's going to sound weird to hear this high up in my ranking, but I do not like what they did with this remake. Maple Treeway was my favorite course on the Wii. On the Switch? What did you do to the net at the end of the course, Nintendo? That was so much fun to trick on. Why am I gliding now? I can do that on almost every other course in the game. There are courses that need changes, and this was not one of them. Aside from that, though, uh, Maple Tree Way is still pretty good. The fall aesthetic is beautiful, of course. And then we have the branches to drift on, the giant wigglers, the Donkey Kong cannon. It's all still here, and it's all still great. Honestly, this is still one of my favorite courses in the game. But to see something that you loved as a child fall from grace into something that's only really, really good. Sadly, I'm going to have to rank this course with only a 9 out of 10. You know, Mount Wario's ski section was pretty good. So what if we just made a whole course based on a ski course and add a big gun to the start of it? Well, DK Summit is that course and it slaps. A ton of places to do tricks, opportunities to just throw yourself in the air just like a real half pipe and great turns to drift around. Even if you can just kind of skip those turns entirely with some good jumps. This course actually feels like skiing at times. Trust me, I went skiing once when I was 11. I know what I'm talking about. I also unironically did the thing they do in bad movies where a kid just hits the tree head on at 20 miles an hour. I was fine because I was wearing the thickest coat known to man, but it did scare the shit out of me and I never went skiing again. Like, I don't know if this is normal, but they didn't even give me the little sticks you use to navigate. They just sent me out on the skis with nothing to grab the ground with. I'd either hit something or hit the ground to stop myself when I wasn't getting enough friction from doing the little pizza thing. Seems kind of dangerous if you ask me. What was I talking talking about again? Oh right, DK Mountain. Uh, yeah. All the excitement of skiing and not a single tree in sight. Great course. Rainbow Road we Here we are. The first good Rainbow Road. And I already know I'm gonna get hate for having Rainbow Road Wii this far down the list. I will say, this is a more technically challenging map over Mario Kart 7's Rainbow Road. But it's nowhere near the most challenging course in the game. Honestly, after years of driving on Neo Bowser City and Mario Kart 8's Rainbow Road, this one's a bit trivial as far as challenge goes. It's still plenty of fun with plenty of tight turns and jumps to trick off of. And I've messed up once or twice here and there, so I can see why people love it. But I come to Rainbow Road for two things, the bright colors and the challenge. 
And frankly, this one isn't leading the pack in either one of those departments, so we're just gonna have to stick it down here on the list. Still an amazing track. And in any other game, it would definitely break into the top 10. I am ecstatic that this course made it back into the game. But you know what course I'm even happier about returning? Rainbow Road 7. Most Rainbow Roads are just what they say on the box. A Rainbow Road. But Rainbow Road 7? We don't even drive on the rainbow half the time. We got the Rings of Saturn, which has a bunch of gaps we have to avoid. We have the moon with craters we can do jumps off of. It's actually got a full-on space theme to it, not just the Starry Night background of all the other Rainbow Roads. If I was ranking just on the creativity of the maps, I think the 3DS version of Rainbow Road would have easily have been the top version of it. But that's not what we're doing. It's still a phenomenal course, though. I particularly like this little tube covered in boosts you have to drive through. Uh, aside from all that, though, it's not really all that challenging of a course to drive on, which is something that a lot of people have come to expect from Rainbow Road, so that does hurt it a little. But that being said, as the most fully realized version of the course thematically, Rainbow Road 7 is still a fun map to ride on that's absolutely beautiful to look at, so I really can't help but place this one highly. You know, I didn't used to love Dragon Driftway, but as I've grown in skill as a player and memorized every turn and corner this game has to offer, Dragon Driftway has slowly drifted its way into my heart. <laughs> Kill me. No, but seriously, this course slaps. Got the big Dragon Ball Shenron looking dragon, the Lakitu doing martial arts on the wall art, the Chinese music. It's the perfect amount of cultural appropriation. <laughs> and oh man, the drifts on this baby. It's just drift after drift after drift on this map. As a man who loves his drifts, this is the course for me. And if you got a mushroom, you could even cut these grass corners at the end of the course to clinch a victory. The perfect ending to an almost perfect course. Honestly, I can't really say it has any flaws. The only reason I'm saying it's not perfect Perfect is because I've somehow managed to find eight courses better than this absolute banger of a track. Which really goes to show just how stacked this game is with absolute classics at this point. You know, like this one, Big Blue Baby, the final crossover track, and the best crossover track. You know, because that's that's how I structured the list. The last one, the last one was always gonna be the best one. I don't even know why I mentioned it, honestly. Big Blue is fantastic. Starting off with some boosts down these drifts before going into drifts covered in conveyor belts, even though the fastest route isn't to drift down the conveyor belts, but instead drifting inside of them and avoiding the conveyor belts entirely. A water section with, you guessed it, drifting. Can you tell I like drifting yet? Holding the R button while turning is the pinnacle of game design. The only thing this map is really missing is the funny punching man himself. It's a shame they never added Captain Falcon to the game, but whatever, that's not what we're concerned about in this video. Video. I'll talk about characters later if this one does well, I guess. I don't, I don't know. 10 out of 10 map. But how do you beat a 10 out of 10 map? Not once, but eight times. You make eight more 10 out of 10 maps, baby. If it was 2014 and you asked me what I thought about Ribbon Road, I would say this track is mid as hell. And to be fair, the opening section of this track is a bit tame. And I'm still in the camp that the color scheme that this course used could be a bit more vibrant. Not a huge fan of bold color schemes like this one. But that is where the complaints end, because over the years I have learned to adore this course. The standout segment of this track is of course the titular ribbon road. The constant weaving for the track allows for constant tricks, which is always great for a quick speed boost. But it's a double-edged sword as the movement of the track really makes it easy to fall off of this one as well. And if the waving track wasn't enough of a hazard, they straight up encourage you to drive off the side of the road, with not one but two shortcuts that you can drive off the main road onto. And these ramps are tough to land on too. You will miss them if you don't get the perfect jump. And honestly, well, that's the kind of driving skill check I'm looking for in this game. And that ending, it's got the classic use a mushroom to get a free shortcut thing going on. I have seen so many races be determined here, and you know how much I love that. All in all, an absolutely fantastic map. Since even its first iteration on the SNES, Rainbow Road has always been a Mario Kart classic. And yeah, that's right, I'm putting SNES Rainbow Road above Wii and 3DS. Now I know, I know, this course is simpler when you compare the designs directly. There's no denying that. But that doesn't mean it's the simpler race. The SNES track is much more narrow and the sides have no railing to speak of, unlike the other two courses. This dramatically increases the risk of punishment for any mistake you may make. And on top of that, SNES Rainbow Road has a few simple but effective obstacles with the thwomps, forcing you to adjust your route as you make your way through this track. If you get pinched between one of these guys and the other racers, it's off to space you go, baby. In comparison to the completely static and obstacle-free course that is Rainbow Road Wii, this course actually feels like a much more competitive race. Exactly what you want to see from a course that's meant to serve as a sort of grand finale. But despite being a good finale, we're not quite at the pinnacle of what Rainbow Road can be yet. We've still got one more course to go before then, because next up is Neo Bowser City. This fucking course. This is another one of those ones that I absolutely dreaded the first few dozen times I played on it, being one of if not the most technically demanding courses in the game. I will say though, 
From a game design perspective, it's almost a little bit too technically demanding. There's a couple of turns here where I feel like you have to know what they are ahead of time in order to make them properly, particularly the second to last turn on the course here. However, the good thing about playing the same game for 10 years is that I've memorized every turn this game has to offer at this point, so I don't have to judge Neo Bowser City from the perspective of a new player anymore. I know this map like the back of my hand at this point, and with a decade of experience, this track is an absolutely exhilarating blast to drift through. That's right, this is another one where you're pretty much always drifting, so you know I think it's amazing. Sure, it may not have as many bells and whistles as some of the other courses, but honestly, at the end of the day, it really doesn't need them. This track is just the core of what Mario Kart is all about in the end. Fun, exciting racing. And here we are, the top five the best of the best. To be honest, for the most part, my top five isn't a hard set thing. The exact order I'd put these in changes day to day, just depending on how I'm feeling, really. But without a doubt, these five are definitely my top five tracks. Starting off with the best edition of Rainbow Road, Rainbow Road 8. This Rainbow Road is by far the most challenging of all the Rainbow Roads. Like, this course is borderline brutal with the turns they're asking you to take here. The corners are just so tight in places that even the tiniest mistake can send you flying. Honestly, I still screw this course up pretty much whenever I'm not playing my usual villager buggy car setup. I just, I just don't know how to handle the turns with other cars. But when I'm in full control of what I'm doing, this is another one of those bangers with a ton of good drifts. And I've complained a lot about split paths and other maps, but they actually matter here. More importantly, the best possible route involves not even choosing a particular path, but jumping from one to another, which turns them into more of like a fun little jumping section. Although, doesn't that kind of defeat the idea of having branching paths if you need to go back and forth between them constantly? Look, the important thing is that they're fun and challenging, okay? So in the end, even if it's not what the developers meant for me to be doing, it still makes for an amazing race. You know what's even better than a super challenging, highly polished course that serves as a fantastic grand finale to the original game, though? One with some wacky gears on it. That's right, TikTok Clock. TikTok Clock is not the most technically challenging course, and it certainly doesn't serve as some sort of a grand finale to the game. And while technically it might not be the best course artistically either, I just love the clocks and the, uh, the clockwork theming. This was always one of my favorite favorite courses from Mario Kart DS. Dodging the second hands on the face of the clock, winding back and forth through these gears to try to stay on the fastest part that's moving forward, and then driving across the gear that's turning towards the finish line for one final boost to try to overtake any other drivers. I love it. I love everything about this course. No complaints. I know it's simple. I know it's objectively not the best course. I don't care. This is a great concept for a course that I just vibe with. And at the end of the day, that's just what I'm trying to do when I play video games. Have a good time. You know what? It's an even better concept for a course though. Music Park is an absolutely beautiful course composed entirely out of instruments and al also road, but we're just we're just gonna ignore that part. The long curves down the piano and xylophones that play notes as you cross over them, the beautiful colors, the jumping notes that hit the ground with such a shockwave that you can do little tricks off of them. Everything about this course is just fantastic. Just like TikTok Clock, it's entirely out of aesthetics, of course. This is not a challenging map in the slightest. But hey, not everything has to be a test of skill, all right? Sometimes you just gotta sit back and enjoy the show. But you know what's an even better course than the last two I placed in my top five based on theming alone? The third one I put on my top five based on theming alone. That's right, Waluigi's Pinball. This course is a classic, and I actually don't think people will complain to see this near the top of the list. Honestly, I still think despite the fact this game has 96 courses, a lot of people will have this as their top pick. It's just that good. Even if I don't personally think it's the best map in the game, I don't blame people who do. The pinball theming is just amazing for Mario Kart. Bright colors plastered everywhere, the insane music, the giant pinballs as obstacles, the fact that the whole course is just you driving through the machine as a pinball yourself, the giant billboard with the sexy beast of a man on it, this is what Mario tracks are made to be. And speaking of pinballs, these things are shockingly good obstacles. They aren't typically hard to avoid, but they do go through pretty much the entire track with you, similar to the cars in Toad's Turnpike. But in the final section of this map as you enter the main table, they are just bouncing randomly everywhere and there is really no way to predict where they're going. No matter how many times I've played this map, there's always one that just comes from the side and gets me. You always gotta keep an eye out for these things. You are never safe. It's again, not the most technically challenging course. This thing is entirely this high up on the list due to the theme, but between the drifts, the sliding down the table, and the randomness of the pinballs, I think it's fair to say that there's some challenge here. But regardless of how difficult the course is, it's an absolute blast from start to finish. And honestly, if you have a problem with this course, I'd like to hear it because I do not think I have 
ever heard anyone complain about this course. As far as I know, this is pretty much universally considered to be one of the best in the series. And even if it is cliche to have it this high up on my list, I have to agree. Absolutely one of my favorites, but not quite number one. Because there's only one course that can stand at the top. Over the last decade of Mario Kart 8, many courses have tried but only one can stand at the top of a tiny YouTuber's hastily thrown together ranking list. And that is, of course, none other than Baby Park again, but this time when I'm winning. You have not lived until you have felt the absolute thrill of making a small Japanese child cry on the other side of the planet because you hit him with a green shell while lapping him for the second time in three minutes. I don't care if there's no skill involved. This is my favorite map in the game to crush kids on. All right, that's my list. Well, let me know what your favorite map is in the comments. If you have anything else you want to see me do rankings of, let me know. All right, bye-bye.